This is Tristan with Vitreous Games. In 2017, the popular game dev channel Brackies created a series of tutorials on how to create a video game using the Unity game engine. I really enjoyed these videos, so I decided to remake them using GDevelop, a 2D open source game engine. The game we will be creating is very similar to the one that Brackies made. However, this is a 2D game engine, so we won't be doing it in 3D. Uh, we have a red player that's going to travel across this white ground and we'll be trying to avoid these dark gray obstacles to get the fastest time we can. We'll be including some physics and we also have sound effects and UI elements. GDevelop was started in 2008 by Florian Rival with the goal of making game development available to everyone. GDevelop does not require any knowledge of coding. Even though it is very easy to use, it is also very powerful and could let you create almost any kind of game you can imagine. The first thing you need to do is start downloading GDevelop from their website. If you click on Learn, you will be taken to the wiki, which includes all the documentation for GDevelop. There's also an excellent forum website and a Discord server, which I spend a lot of time on. GDevelop runs on Windows, Mac, or Linux, or you can even just run it in your web browser. But this is mainly just for testing out GDevelop. I highly recommend installing the desktop because the web version has some limitations. The Windows installer is only about 80 megabytes, which is really small compared to a lot of the other game engines. Once you have eGDevelop installed, you will see this screen. It gives you some quick actions to open up templates. If you click on these, you'll see the actual code to each of these games. And these are links to tutorial videos about eGDevelop. And then the, down here is a list of games that were created in GDevelop for you to play and read about. But for our purposes, we're just going to create a blank project. And we're going to give it a name. Hit click Create Project. Now we need to create a scene. So click to add scene. It creates a scene called New Scene. Click on that scene. And you're now inside the scene editor of GDevelop. The first thing we will create is the ground object for our game. So on the right, under objects, we'll click add new object, click sprite, and we'll name it ground, and we'll click add an animation. And we're going to edit it with Piskel, which is a built-in image editor included in GDevelop. The ground, we're just going to color it white. We will use the paint bucket tool and paint it white. By default, Piskel will make this a 64 by 64 pixel object. You can also resize it to the size you want, but we're going to resize it inside the game engine. So we'll leave it at 64 pixels. Save and apply. Now we have this object here that we can drag into our game. When you click on the object, you have these handles that you can use to resize it, uh, to rotate it. Uh, obviously you can move it around. Uh, once you click on an object, this properties panel will populate with the data of the object. You can change these options here. One thing that's very useful when moving objects and placing objects is the grid. If you click up here, the icon is toggle grid. Let's just click setup grid. You can see that it's going to be uh, 32 by 32 pixels and we'll just say show grid. So there's now a grid on the screen. When you move objects now, they will snap to the grid. This makes it much easier to line things up. And so for our ground, we kind of want it to cover most of the screen like this. This dark box is the viewable area of the game. The game resolution is set under Game Settings Properties. So this is currently 800 by 600. I'm going to increase it to 1080p, so we'll do 1920 by 1080, and we'll zoom out using the scroll, mouse scroll, and we'll just make this big enough to fit on our new resolution. Okay, so now we've got a ground. Let's create a player object, also a sprite, call it player, add an animation, Edit with Piskel. This one we're going to make red. And I'm going to copy the same color Brackies used. We'll use a paint bucket tool and we'll paint it. 
and drag our player onto the screen. Now we've got a player and the ground object. One thing to be aware of in 2D games is how items are layered. There's two different ways that the ordering is decided. The first is based on the layer that the object is in. GDevelop starts with just a single base layer. If you click on an object, you'll see the layer is, is base layer. So these are both on the same layer. So once things are on the same layer, then it looks at the Z value. The Z order is the front to back ordering. The ground is assigned Z order one. The player is assigned to Z order two. And if we were to change that, so let's make the player Z order zero. It's now uh, hidden behind the ground. So we would like it this way with a player on top of the Z order of two. If you want to see what this game is going to look like, you can just hit this preview button right here. This is our game so far. Nothing happens. It's just two images and nothing else. In order to make this game more dynamic, let's add a physics behavior to the player object. So if you double click on the player object and click on the behaviors tab and add behavior to the object. Behaviors can be used to quickly add very neat and interesting logic to your object. In this case, we're going to select the physics engine. By default, the type is dynamic. That means it will move and react to other objects. It will be in the shape of a box, which is perfect because we're a square shaped sprite. The size of the physics object by default will match the size of the sprite, which is what we want. You can also adjust things like the density, friction. Friction applies when two physics objects are touching. Uh, linear damping. This is almost like air resistance. When your object's moving, it'll slow down naturally based off this value. Similar thing for angular da damping. If an object is spinning, if there's no angular damping, it'll just keep spinning forever. Restitution is basically uh, bounciness, like how much force will be retained after it bounces off something. So if this bounces off a, a wall, for instance, 10% of its force will be retained. And of course, how is it affected by gravity? Let's just accept the defaults for now. If we try a preview now, let's see what happens. the object fell down like a real physical object in the world. However, there's nothing for it to land on. Uh, we can give it something to land on if we just scoot our ground down here and give ground the physics behavior. And instead of dynamic, we don't want the ground to fall like the player does. We're gonna make it static. So it's just gonna be locked in place. So if we hit play now, the player stopped and did a little, little tiny bounce and just stayed there. Let's add another object and make it more interesting. There's a couple objects. Let's see what this looks like. Perfect. So that's very natural looking physics. Very easy to do. We will be modifying those physics values in a future video. You can also make these squares act like spheres really easily by Adjusting the physics behavior, instead of the shape being a box, you can choose a circle. Let's see what happens now when we run this. So the physics engine thinks these are all spheres. So even though they look like squares, you can tell they just roll. So if you were to put this in your game, you'd obviously want to edit your sprite to be a circle shape. We want to leave these as boxes. The physics engine used by GDevelop is Box2D. It's a great physics engine. Let's remove these extra players. And I also want to take the physics behavior off of the ground. We'll just delete that behavior. Because in our 2D world, we're not going to be doing physics interactions between the player and the ground. I also want to change the background to look the same color as Bracky's game. So if you right click and choose Scene Properties, you can choose the scene background color here. Okay, that's the same gray that he used. This is also where you can adjust the gravity of the physics engine. If we were doing a side view game, the gravity makes sense. But since we're doing a top down game, it doesn't make sense for the player object to be falling down. So I'm actually gonna set the gravity to zero. The last thing I wanted to mention is that you can rearrange the scene editor in any way that makes sense to you. And you don't have to worry because you can always reset them in your preferences. File, Preferences, Reset, Scene Let, Editor Layout. You can also set the theme of GDevelop here. 
the default looks like this. I like using the Nord. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we'll start getting into events and adding logic to our game. If you want to be notified when that comes out, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.